All right, good morning, Broncos country. If you're catching this stream live, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if not, we appreciate you guys tuning in whenever and wherever, uh, whether this be the, the live stream or whether this be on the YouTube um, video of this show. My name is Ross, and we're here to break down every single drop back between new Broncos newcomer Mike McGlinchey against one of the best pass rushers in the league, Max Crosby. This is, of course, from the Sunday game uh, between the Broncos and the Raiders. Uh, now, just before we get into things, um, like I said, I'm a like you might have uh, caught the article over at milehighreport.com, um, or you might have been here for one of the last uh, film reviews. We've done a few of those so far this year. Um, but uh, for context, I'm a high school football coach, uh, coaching the varsity over at Cole Valley. Shout out to my dogs over there. Um, I have about 12 years of experience, um, 11 years of playing, a couple years of coaching. Um, so, I know a little bit about the offensive line. I don't claim to be an expert here, but I can definitely get some, get you guys some better insights than where you are previously. So, like I said, um, we're going to be take a look at 25 plays here. Mike McGlinchey uh, against Max Crosby in drop pack passing situations. Besides a couple, I have a couple extra ones I want to throw in there um, just to take a look at McGlinchey himself. But besides that, we're going to be taking a look at this pretty highly anticipated matchup of tackle versus pass rusher um, that took place in week one of the NFL season. But just real quick before we get into it, of course, you can follow us Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Mile High Report. Um, subscribe to us here on YouTube if you haven't done so yet. We really appreciate your support. Of course, you can find all these awesome articles over at milehighreport.com all season long for anything Broncos related. But let's go ahead and get into the first um, piece of film that we have for you guys today. This is a second down and 15. Um, and this is going to be the first time that Mike McGlinchey goes one-on-one -on -one with Max Crosby in the Broncos uniform and in this game. So let's go ahead and take a look, see what we got going on here. So I'm just going to play through it one time all the way through. So you see Crosby out here in a pretty wide alignment, uh, about a couple yards off of McGlinchey. All right, and then we see that there. So what we're going to take a look at here is you can see Mike McGlinchey. He gets a decent little punch here when he meets Crosby. Let's go ahead and play this a little slower. So what we're going to be looking at here is when we get off the snap. So already... Already, you see Mike McGlinchey. One thing that you'll see from him, he has a tremendous first kick step, man. His first one or two, he gains so much ground. And look at this. Look at this right here. That, That's that's pretty, man. Not going to lie. That's a good-looking kick step right there. So, you see him. Uh, McGlinchey's a little bit inside the hashes. Um, Crosby's on the hashes. And... It's probably about two yards away in terms of distance. So the rule of thumb for those that don't know is that the farther out a defensive the um, the dude you're blocking is from you, the more vertical of a set of a kick set you take. So Crosby's out here a little closer. He's taking like a 45, just getting out to them. Vertical, or uh, he's all the Max Crosby all the way out here. You're going to take a vertical set. Essentially, the rule is always to have inside leverage. Um, so you do that by lining your outside knee up with the crotch of the defender or whoever you're blocking. Um, so McGlinchey does I hear a couple good first steps. He doesn't. He keeps his shoulders fairly square to the line of scrimmage. You can see him put his foot down, preparing for contact against Crosby. Hand, um, his right hand a little bit missed over the shoulder, but the left hand hits right in the chest. And hey, man, McGlinchey's a strong dude. So he really only hits um, Crosby square with one hand. So with that meet, and Crosby falls off balance because of that. So let's get back to that punch right there. One, just that one punch right there. And you're going to see in this game too, Crosby really likes to work back inside. He doesn't like a, a outside pass rush. He really likes working back to the inside. So he tries to work back inside. Crosby gets, um, McGlinchey gets enough of, of a piece of him to knock him off balance. That's a good first rep right there. 
Let's go ahead and uh, let's get into the next one. All right. I'm going to play this one one time through for you guys. Third and five. Bring the heat. Crosby, super wide alignment because he's all he's going to be all the way here out here because of the tight end Greg Dulce this year. And the Broncos did chip Max Crosby a lot in this game. So McGlinchey did get some help. So he does a good kick set, goes out to him a little bit, gives up. He might over set a little bit. Just see the, the head placement between him and Crosby. And Crosby, once again, tries to fight the hands and works back inside. Passes off too quick. He's too far out. And McGlinchey is able to get in front of him and get a good enough piece of him. That That's, that's decent stuff there. All right, of course, if you guys have any questions during the stream, feel free to drop in the chat. More than happy to answer you um, or any comments you guys have as well. I'll definitely be taking a look at those, so don't worry. All right, third and 10, they're going to be bringing the heat. So he gets chipped. Um, we get a little receiver chip here. McGlinchey goes out to meet him. Now Crosby actually tries to work outside. And the good thing here is look at those hands. So McG um, Crosby fights the hands. And tries to get low um, underneath McGlinchey to get around that edge. McGlinchey, he does he does this perfectly. So technically, he does give up the edge to Mason uh, to, to to Max Crosby. He does give up the edge here. But after he gives up the edge, you see right there, that's a perfect recovery. He gives up the edge, turns into a run block. He just drives him upfield like that. Put a hand on his hip, hand on his back, take him upfield, run him past the quarterback. That's fairly decent stuff there. Obviously, one of the worst parts of this, you see when they first, right when they're about to make contact, McGlinchey stops his feet. There. He's kicking, kicking, stops. So that's why Max Crosby is able to get the edge right there is because he, um, I would be willing to bet after two plays um, to, uh, where Crosby is working back inside on you, you're going to be stopping your feet, trying to get ready to plant up into Crosby. So Crosby uses that to his advantage, almost uh, makes contact, works outside, uh, but McGlinchey is still able there with good recovery. Good recovery. That's veteran stuff right there. All right, let's check out this next play. Third, uh, sorry, fourth drop back between McGlinchey and Crosby. And look, shocker, he works back inside again. No way. So... McGlinchey does stop his feet here on contact. You see his base get extended. Look at that kick foot. So he plants it, and it does slide a little bit, which is not fun when that happens. It's really annoying. Slide, yep. You see him plant. It'll slide back. And then that stop, and that stop and lean is what enables Max Crosby to be able to work back inside. McGlinchey does recover late to be able to drive him and take him past Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson does a good job moving in the pocket right there. But still not the best of blocks by McGlinchey on this one. Um, I think overall he did like, I give him like a 90% success rate on his blocks. Probably maybe closer to 85. This one is one of those gray area ones where, yeah, you can count that as a bad one. And if you're being hard on yourself, you're definitely not going to, be happy with this play, but the bright side is that he works back inside. And, and one of the things here too, you guys, is that um, the context around this. Mike McGlinchey on the new team, new offense, and he hasn't played all preseason, and he's been out with an injury. And he's going up against in his first game back. He's knocking the rust off of one of the best, I'd say, top five pass rushers in the league. It's not an easy task. I know how good McGlinchey is. I know how much the Broncos paid him. This is not an easy task to do. So he did pretty good, all things considered. All right, let's hop into the next play here. Let's see the Broncos score a touchdown. Okay, so what I don't like here is that McGlinchey, good kick step. I mean, you see uh, Dulcich chipping Crosby. So Crosby has a little bit more space, takes a little bit more time. But I really hate how much he turns his shoulders to wait for Crosby. Because it's that turning the shoulders and the stop in the feet right there that give Crosby that much more ability to work back inside. It's just, I really don't like it, man. Now, 
I'm guessing, man, with how much bowls and McGlinchey do this, especially with McGlinchey being as good as he is, I'm assuming that this is something that they are at least allowing, if not coaching up at the NFL level. I'm going to tell you guys, like I said, I'm not an expert. I've never spoken to an NFL head co- uh, offensive line coach. I've only been around the college realm, at the high, and that was my highest level of play. I'm mostly around the high school realm as well. We don't teach that. I was never taught that. Maybe this is something they do at the higher levels, but um, I'm not familiar with that. I always like to keep my shoulders square to the line of scrimmage so he can't beat you inside like that. So it's that. He does have good recovery, all things considered. So Mc- Crosby, work inside. McGlinchey sees that, and then he's able to get inside, but he's not able to get upfield after that. McGlinchey's able to work hard. Um, push him upfield, uh, push Crosby upfield, and Russell Wilson gets a little pressure there, but tons of space to roll out, and that's really where Russell Wilson thrives anyway. All right, good touchdown. Love. That was good. That was fun seeing the offensive drive. Uh, the first offensive drive of the game start with the touchdown. Very good. All right. Next drive. Quick pass. Crosby was able to do a dang thing on these quick, quick passes. See McGlinchey, he doesn't overset. Uh, I see him in the top of your screen, just right there. That's all you need to do. With these quick passes, you, you kick step out to him, get a good punch. He can't get past you. And he's on making the play. Good stuff there. Easy block, right? All right, let's see here. So more one-on-one, a little bit deeper of a pass than this. This is the one where uh, McGlinchey gives up a sack. This is clearly his fault. Um, there's another sack that the Raiders get this game. We'll, we're going to take a look at that play. I'm not sure if that's necessarily Mike McGlinchey's fault, even though technically you can give that to him. So let's see the mistake that he makes. Kick step, kick step. And so you see here, it's a long enough play where Crosby is able to get two pass rush moves off. McGlinchey stuffs the first one. He has proper head placement in contact. He's on that inside leverage right there. That's good. So he gives a good first punch onto Crosby and and stuffs him. But then he turns out, and then you see his feet get um, narrow, and he leans. You can see evidence that he look at his body posture right before, right there. Body posture. He's leaning. It's looking like a run pro. And you can see he's lean, but given how he falls face first as well. So he goes in to make his second contact. He leans and he opens his feet up too much. He turns his hips too much um, facing the sideline. Max Crosby is able to just work him off balance. He doesn't even do anything that crazy. He just swats and hits a little little club on his shoulder. And that's enough to knock uh, Mike McGlinchey down. And he's able to get the sack right there. So good initial pass pro by McGlinchey. Sets him on the first attempt, but it's a second pass rush uh, move that um, Crosby works. You get laid in your set. You start to lean. You bring your feet together. You get beat. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. That was, um, in my opinion, the worst uh, rep for Mike McGlinchey this whole game. He never liked to be on the ground looking back and seeing some dude hit your quarterback. Not great. Not great right there. All right, let's go ahead and bump into the next play here. Now, second 27 because of that. Fun stuff. So Mike McGlinchey um, or Max Crosby, he's really going to be putting his ears back and trying to get around the edge here. You don't really see that happen to him. Um, Didn't see that happen too much with him actually trying to work around the outside edge. McGlinchey does an all right job here. Let's watch the initial. Good first couple steps. He brings his feet to, he pauses his feet after the first two. One, two, kind of pauses. And that's what allows Crosby to get around the edge right there. You see McGlinchey really anticipating that inside move. But he does give up the edge a little bit. Max Crosby was able to get around, but he still has that arm on the shoulder, which is able to slow Crosby down enough. This is a quick enough pass. This looks like a design screen anyway. I really see Russell Wilson kind of looks downfield. If anything, is this is either a design um, dump off to the running back or um, this is a one look um, move from Russell Wilson. He has one read. If that receiver is not open, he dumps off immediately. We just do a, a good. Oh, yeah. So what we see here, look at Kush, look at Kush. Yeah, that's a screen. That's for sure a screen. Kush, 
makes one contact, pauses for a second, then tries to get out to that linebacker. But the linebacker, yeah, he makes a good break on this ball, man. He reads it really quick. Kush is coming right down the line of scrimmage. In fact, going backwards, but he still can't get him. Um, it's not a lack of an angle on Kush. Um, I would say that's just a great read by the backer. Um, an unfortunate situation for the Broncos all around here. But McGlinchey, boom, does enough. Make a little contact. It's a screenplay. He's going to get the ball out. All right, next play. One-on-one -on -one here from McGlinchey. Uh, he does get a little help from Quinn Miners. Because um, Kush takes over the guy that was on Quinn. Quinn works out to Crosby. Good teamwork there. I love it. So... Good stuff here. Um, let's see. Max Crosby tries to work just a bull rush right here. Nothing fancy. McGlinchey's able to be strong enough to sink down in his stance with work the good hips and not get pushed back too much. Obviously, you see Max Crosby pushing back a couple steps there. Nothing crazy, luckily. And then um, Quinn Miners goes in, takes a rib shot, um, shuts the door on Crosby on this one. Fairly quick pass. You just got to get in front of him. Work that. It's clean. That's decent stuff right there. Good stuff from Quinn Miners. That, that's what I like mostly, I think. All right, next play. One-on-one -on -one here. Max Crosby, once again, tries to work inside. He takes a couple steps upfield and plants that outside foot. Tries to work the hands a little Mr. Miyagi stuff right there and get inside. Um, you see Mike McGlinchey not give a bunch of space between him and Quinn Miners, which is good. That obviously allows you to post back up a little bit easier and cut off any space Crosby would have to go inside. Quinn Miner is there to help anyway. So, once again, another good uh, good move from Quinn Miners right there. Good stuff from Kush, be able to take over that tackle. Um, that is over um, Miners. We're just going to see right here. Kicks up, kicks up, contact, works back inside. Not enough, not enough. So, whether it's the fact that we're getting the ball out too quick, Quinn Miners is there to help too. Max Crosby is not going to do a dang thing on this play. All right, let's take a look at this next one. First down and 10, they're passing. And you're actually going to see Trotman here, the tight end, stay in in a max protection, or at least a uh, assistant protection with the tight end. He's going to stay in. He, you know what, this is a barely even a, a McGlinchey play. Look at, look at Trotman, dude. Look at him lock up Max Crosby. I know he wasn't expecting to get clamped by a tight end like that. Oh, man. Let's go. A tight end that can block. See, and, and let's just take a look at the way he does well. Good kick step. He, he doesn't have to set too deep because Crosby's right there on top of him. Takes more of a 45 set. Splits the crotch with his outside knee. Crosby tries to work around. Trotman just kind of, I mean, not the, the cleanest of hands right there, but he turns into a round block, tries to take him down. Too late for Crosby, tried to work back inside. Mike McGlinchey is going to be right there anyway. So it doesn't matter what, what he wants to do. Good job, Trotman. That's good stuff. I love a tight end that can block. All right, next play here. Working this two-minute drill still. McGlinchey one-on-one -on -one with Crosby. Look at that. That's a good post step right there. That is a good post up by, by McGlinchey. And also, man, you could just see McGlinchey is strong. Good punch. It's, it's that hand placement. Look at that hand placement. Left hand on the left shoulder or on the left chest. That's good stuff. That's perfect. He's going to cut them inside. Crosby tries to work the hands again. Try to do a quick move inside. McGlinchey posts up, shuts the door. You got Quinn Miners right there helping as well. Um, that definitely made a world of difference with Max Crosby. Uh, it wasn't McGlinchey just by himself most of the time. You see either a little chip from Miners, a little chip from the tight end. Um, so that that's good game planning right there that you're going to see. Let's go ahead and put this one into a little slow-mo action. And watch this one through. Really take a look at Quinn Miners too. So this is going to be part film review on Quinn Miners too. About to go. Do stop the dang ball. All right, there we go. Good. It's a good first step. You see what I don't like though 
is you see McGlinchey bring his feet together a little bit. Now, the best way to do this is um, when you on your kick step is that like you throw your outside leg back. So you're going to throw this leg back and to make to help make sure that your feet don't come too close together so you don't have a good base is actually I teach, um, I coach to drag this post foot. So instead of picking it up, keep it on the ground. So throw that kick back and drag it. Drag it. Don't let it leave the ground. But you see, he picks it up. His feet get a little bit narrow. And you see there for a second, too, that both of his feet are in the air at the same time. Right there. So it's good that he was already engaged. But if you if some if the defense lineman makes contact with you when both feet are in the air, oh you're you're getting taken for a ride. You're going back. Luckily, he was already making contact with Crosby. So he's not going to get blown back here, both feet in the air. He already has hands on them, so it's not going to be too big of a deal. He gets that post foot up, and he's able to get in the way of Crosby. Crosby's not able to work inside. He tries to get back outside after that. It really isn't going to happen. So decent stuff there by McGlinchey and great stuff there by Quinn Miners looking for work. He's going to take a chip on, on Max Crosby, and it's not going to work out well for Mr. Crosby at all. All right. Next play, chugging along. Um, thank you guys for it. I see as you're tuning in. Um, like I said uh, earlier, just please, if you have any questions about this, feel free to drop something in the chat. Um, I am going to be watching that um, the whole way through. So just let me know what you, uh, you want to know, if you have any questions, or if you're, um, once again, if you're just watching this a little bit later on YouTube, um, feel free to drop a comment there. I'm always there to uh, reply to you. All right. Second down and nine. Still continuing this two-minute drive. Look at this. Easy money. Easy bunny. My Mike McClitchie right there. Once again, Crosby tries to work back inside. It hasn't really been working for him all game. I don't know why he keeps trying to do it. He had more success going outside, really. Um, but it's, it's a quick pass. So, quick step. Good punch. Crosby's not getting there. Let's see. So look, quick step, punch. You see how I love this. Look how much um, uh, Max Crosby recoils. Boom. He gets shoved back. He gets stood up. If as an offensive lineman, you're able to punch a dude and he gets stood up like this. Boom. Stood up. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Let's put this one into slow-mo action. All right. Step, just a little 45 set there since Crosby's closer. He tries to work back inside. It's that good punch by the inside hand. Um, obviously, Max does get across McGlinchey's face here, so it's not the best, but a good strike. And you see him hit him off balance enough. Hits Max Crosby off balance enough where he gets pushed and shoved into the kick leg of Quinn Miners right there. Trips, falls. He's not making the play. So all around, decent stuff there. And heck, maybe we'll still give um, Miners a little bit of assist on this block as well. Wasn't necessarily planned, but you know, I'm sure um, Miners will take that. All right, third down and six. Another pass rush here. Out a little bit wider because of Trotman, the tight end. So you see Max Crosby lined up outside the tight end. Chip by the tight end. McGlinchey has perf... Oh, wait. Not... Fully perfect, but still pretty dang good body position here. Max Crosby isn't working anything fancy. He's going to just work a bull rush on McGlinchy there. McGlinchy's there. He's waiting for him. He has inside leverage. Look at where the helmets are. Good. And so when he tries to hit that bull rush, you get that first punch. You sense bull. You drive your feet into him and you, and you work your hips. Boom. Like a uh, little bit. So initially, good contact, good hips. But then he starts to lean in and his hips get away from him. Max Crosby is able to work around the edge at that point. But he just works him past Russell Wilson. And then you see Quinn Miners in there helping with that as well. Um, shut down from Max Crosby. Not going to happen. All right, next play. One-on-one, -on -one, Max Crosby. He works back inside. And now this is what you're going to see most of the time. Uh, and, and what we've seen most of the time, really, is that Mike McGlinchey, he does get, um, Crosby does manage to get across the face from McGlinchey oftentimes. So you'll see here, 
he gets it right there. That he gets there. But yeah, Quinn Miner's helping, and you have a hand on the hip. So while Crosby does get across McGlinchey's face, it's more horizontal. He never he doesn't really get the vertical. So I mean, obviously, point of the pass rush is you're trying to get vertical, trying to get to the quarterback. So if uh, McGlinchey is able to keep him there, seeing horizontal, just working down the line of scrimmage, um, he's not able to get to Russ. That's fine right there. All right. Longer pass play here. This is going to be for the second touchdown of the game. Let's look at this matchup. Let's watch all the way through. Shift from Trotman. Goes on his route. Crosby works inside. Okay. So I have a couple thoughts here. I'm going to slow it down for us. I got a couple thoughts here. I think this very well could be a designed stunt by the Raiders that was ruined because of the chip by Trotman. That's my belief. So let's watch this slow. So you're going to see, boom, chip by Trotman. McGlinchey's right there. And then with 91s, he's working, he's working across the face. So a, a lot of these stunts, you're going to get these looping stunts where the DN loops around, defensive tackle, slants inside. So it looks like he slants inside. Then Crosby makes contact, contact there, and then tries to loop around to what would be the A-gap. Now, let's give Miners a little bit of credit. He goes ahead. He, he bodies up on um, Crosby. Pretty much just tries to take him out like a run block. You know, drives up on him, puts his head down, makes enough contact there. And McGlinchey is able to take over number 51 right there. Feels him. Feels Crosby leave. Gets his eyes inside. Takes over 51 right, or sorry, 91 right there. Um, Russell Wilson's able to roll outside. He just squares off um, 91 right there. Just squares him off. Russell gives Russell Wilson all the space to go there. He's already inside. You see number 91. He's already inside of McGlinchey. McGlinchey's not going to be able to work back in front of him and post back up in him in that situation. So he walls him off. He walls him off right there. Russell Wilson sees that. That's decent stuff right there. Um all things considered. Miners does a good job on Crosby as well. Love that. Good play. Good play. All right. So this one where Russell Wilson's going to keep it. We got a third down and six a little bit later in the game. Let's go ahead and watch this one through. All right. A little bit one-on-one -on -one action. McGlinchey and Crosby. Um, you get a chip. From the receiver right there onto Crosby. Allows McGlinchey to work a little bit easier inside of him. Max Crosby gets pushed to the inside. He tries to work inside there. And you see number nine across the street with uh, Garrett Bowles. Um, so, I mean, not the best block by um, Bowles here. He reads that one too late. He should be blocking five the whole way through. So, he's a little bit late on that one. But you see Crosby tries to work inside McGlinchey. Works him into number nine. He trips over him, um, and McGlinchey lays on him like you're supposed to. So not the cleanest, definitely serviceable, and that's a good job. Um, you're going to see a lot of these times. Obviously, these aren't going to be perfect blocks most of the time. You really don't see those in the NFL anyway, given the uh, skill parity. But given how good Max Crosby is, if you can just make this happen, not, not let him really pressure Russell Wilson much, that's a win in my book. And so that's a win by Mike McGlinchey right there. See, um, Crosby tries to work back inside. McGlinchey runs up field, up and in. Loses his feet up and in and starts to work in that drive. Crips, buries him. Fine stuff right there. All right, just a handful of plays left. Let's see one. All right, we got eight plays left. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Really appreciate you guys stopping by every one of you so we got second down six we're going to throw this one into half speed and we're going to watch this one through i'm expecting maybe a chip from the tight end right here nope just clears but that's still um having that there still means that max crosby has to have a i'm sorry i know i said no i know we said we we're going to watch it through and i still stopped it whoops shut the door on that man good job mike mcglinchey so 
um, Crosby has that out here wider. Mm, I really don't like that second that that second part of his kick step though. Look at McGlinchey, one good one, and then he brings his feet together. He brings his feet together right there. One kick step. Ah, uh, mm. we're not Dorothy trying to get back to Kansas. Don't click your heels in any time on the offensive line. So don't like that. I don't like how much he turned out to Max Crosby. Faces him, gets good hands on him. Crosby tries to work back inside. McGlinchey posts up and he shuts the door on Max Crosby. So once again, good recovery by, by McGlinchey here. Good recovery. A little hope for minors again. But I hate that. That I mean, it's really his third kick step, technically. Let's count this. One, then a kind of a of a small one, like a stutter. So one good kick, stutter right there, brings his heels together, makes contact, nice goes inside. Yeah. It's an all right. It's an all right one. Not my not my favorite uh, play from McClinchy right there. All right, second and eight. See, so this is going to be a great decision by McGlinchey. This is one of those plays where it looks horrible when watching it live. You see McGlinchey, he just leaves a guy and lets him go unabated to the quarterback. But this is exactly what you're supposed to do. This is the right move by, my, by Mike McGlinchey right there. The rule of thumb on the offensive line, inside guy first. So if, you're, if uh, Miner's going to be locked up here, He's going outside. He's going inside. He goes outside. He sees 59 going inside, though. He moves to take him. The quickest route to the quarterback is through the inside gap. You're going to have um, just the way this works. Um, the way this ends up being is that you're going to have one unblocked guy. So you're going to see that check down to um, Javante Williams right there. That's all Russell Wilson has to do. Russell Wilson has to beat that, that unblocked guy. McClinchy out to see him. Boom. Goes inside to meet the inside guy. He makes the right choice right there. Now, it's unfortunate that there's not one more guy to block there. It'd be nice if the running back was not on a route. You'd be able to chip him. Russell Wilson would, have, uh, would be able to get in the way at 51. You have tons of time to get the ball out. But that's a good football IQ. That's good FBI. Uh, football intelligence by Mike McClinchy right there. And he makes a good block. I know that one was a one-on-one -on -one with Max Crosby. But that's one of the other plays I want to show in this one. Um, to show the smartness and veteranness of Mike McGlinchey. All right, we got six more plays, ladies and gentlemen. All right, 50% speed. Let's check her out. Third down and 10, obvious pass rush situation. Crosby's once again on the way out here for the bunch and for the tight end. Going to need to see a good first step by McGlinchey. He goes out to him a little bit, chipped by Trotman. McGlinch is right there. You see Max Crosby works inside. Now, this is the other sack. So, we're going to watch Quinn Miners on this play, too. So, you're going to see these two, these two on these two. Miners with good block here. 90 is trying to go outside. He actually runs past Crosby, which, in my opinion, that is just him not being a robot, not sticking to his assignment, which, I mean, so uh, there's a uh, there's a big a hole right there for uh, for Russell Wilson to step up into, which sucks is why he gets sacked here. Um, I'm I'm not putting the blame on McGlinchey or Miners or the outline on this one. Maybe Bull, since he does have good inside leverage right there, but Russell Wilson really needs to step in, up in, into this pocket and make that pass. That sh that's that's on Russ, man. He should be able to do that. He's a good enough quarterback to be able to do that. But what you're going to see happen here is that uh, number 90, Miners guy, and also, I hate where Lloyd Cushenberry is right here. Look look at this picture. What's wrong with this? You have an offensive lineman on no one facing backwards. The center who started here all the way out here. Actually, I, I want to watch him real quick. I want I want to see what Cush was doing. Okay. So he's out there, works, tries to work back. He's looking for work, but then the work goes away. Work back inside, Lloyd. Work, work back inside, which he does a little bit too late. This is a, just a mess of a play, man. Okay. 
Crosby tries to work inside. Number 90 outruns him. You see Miners take over Crosby. McGlinchey sees number 90 just a little bit too late and isn't able to get all the way in front of him. But still, oh, man. tough play all around. I think Wilson should be able to do something better than this. Hmm. Let's see how much time the line gives Wilson. Once again, just going to this. Let's go ahead and get there. Take it back to full speed so we can count. Snap at 14-15. So he has three seconds. He decides to go. The Broncos give him a good three seconds. They give him good pocket to step up into. I think that's a decent job by the offense line there. Um, not the cleanest all the way around. Really weird seeing 90 run around like that. Normally, you don't have to worry about that as often in linemen. They did here. All right. Let's get on to the next play here. Okay, first down and 10. Just a bull. This is one of the plays where McGlinchy got bullied. You see Crosby just with the bull rush here. He's out wide. Luckily, he buries his head in, so he doesn't see Russell Wilson. He's not able to get off the block. But Mick Lynch, gets bullied here. This is one of his three bad, just generally bad plays. Now, so this in slow-mo, so we can try to fix Mike McGlinchy here. Let's, let's see if we can fix this play by Mike McGlinchy. Expecting him to bull rush. Crosby out here. McGlinchy right here. Let's see his feet. Feet are most important. Good first kick step. He catches him. He's moving his feet. But you see... Ooh, I think I saw it. I think I saw it. Watch your feet. Feet get too close together. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Look, he, he almost crosses his feet over, you guys. He almost crosses his foot over. Look at the post foot. So kick foot makes contact. Post foot almost goes right behind his kick foot. You, he's on one leg right there. You're in the um, a guy like Max Crosby is going to hit you on the pull rush. You're absolutely going to get driven back right here. That's the culprit. That's the culprit. Well, I feel like, I feel like you remember that one teacher against Dash on right there, right there. Look, his feet are almost just parallel to each other, right behind, man. That's bad. That's bad. That that nothing good can come of that, especially when you're trying to defend against a poor rush. All right, so there we go. We figure out why Mike McLinch he got bullied on this play. It's because his feet came too far together. He kind of crossed them. He that's why I coach to drag the post foot. Normally, when you drag the post foot, it's a lot harder for you to pick it up and put it behind your other foot. So let's see here. If Mike McGlinchey drags that post foot. He's still, you, it doesn't really slow you down. I, I, I promise you, I'm still quick. I wasn't even that good of a player. I'm still quick. So if he drags it, he picks it up right there. See, he like, if he drags that post foot, way less chance that it gets brought back um, behind the other leg. Yep, he gets bullied. Bad rep. Bad rep all around. Okay, four more plays to go. Almost there. Appreciate you guys sticking with us in this one. Yeah. Um, so, hey, good news is we're fi if I, a high school coach, I'm only 24, man. I only have like 12 years of experience in this stuff. If I'm able to help, if I'm able to notice what's going on here, the bad techniques of Mike McClinchy, why he's getting beat, why he's giving up these to, to Max Crosby, I'm very, I'm pretty certain that McClinchy can figure it out that, their offensive line coach can figure it out that the Broncos, a professional football organization, can figure this out. If I can help, I'm sure they can too. I, I'm i not the one getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I would like to. That'd be really great. Broncos, if you're uh, looking for a new assistant, assistant to the assistant offensive line coach, call your boy up. All right. If anyone has context, anyone in the chat, anyone watching has context, you know, I... I'd be more than happy to help work uh, to work for the uh, Denver Broncos. All right, next play. Let, let's stop talking about that. Second three. Let's go, Mike McGlinchey. Uh, once again, Crosby's out wide. He sets out to him. You see McGlinchey, or uh, Crosby, excuse me, tried to work back inside. Unable. Not, not possible. Not happening. Boom. Good hands. 
And you see, once again, Max Crosby, he gets punched to stand up. And Glenchy stands him up. Good punch. I like how he's carrying his hands right there. Close, not overextending, so Crosby can't get his hands on them and take him over, make him lean. Close, good punch, good accuracy. It's a quick pass. So really all you have to do is good body position, which he is. Get the good punch. Max Crosby's not going to get there. All around decent play right there by the Denver Broncos also. You got Quinn Miners helping there as well. Making sure that door is all the way shut for Max Crosby to not be able to work inside. He was unable to. It was good reps. All right. Here is, I believe this is going to be the third um, and maybe last bad play by Mike McGlinchey in this. In third or fourth. Yeah, three or four bad reps um pretty much we're looking at the dropbacks um he looked pretty good in in the pass in the play action uh, pass pro game mcglinchy looked good in there he was pretty clean all day on the screens he looked fine um so that's why we're just really looking at these dropbacks because everywhere else on and then even the run game mcglinchy looked pretty good i didn't watch too much of the run game film i've been more focused on him in the past game against max crosby but overall mike mcglinchy in the past game in the screens in the dropbacks in the play action, he looked pretty dang solid all night long. Now, of course, he struggled when he was one-on-one with Max Crosby. Um, and I say struggled, he performed like a 75% clip um, against Max Crosby, which isn't too bad, once again, considering the circumstances. Let's watch this. Okay. One-on-one, Crosby's out wide, has to duck out... Um, so he doesn't come in contact with the receiver there. Works back inside. Then he works to the outside. So this is a fairly tough thing. So coming out wide, hits it inside. McGlinchey actually has a good a good body position. He actually has a good set, good hand placement. Um, I like where he is positioned. But what doesn't help is that it's... Where McGlinchey kind of maybe gets screwed is it's from the backside with Bowles getting pushed in like that a few yards, collapses a pocket, narrows a pocket, just kind of squeezes it. So there's not really a whole thing for Russell Wilson to step up into. If And then also it's a pretty deep drop back from Russell Wilson as well. The rollout doesn't help because McGlinchey, you, you don't know when the quarterback's going to roll out. You never do. So it's hard for McGlinchey to stay on. Um, Crosby, because Crosby can see Wilson rolling out. Mike McGlinchey cannot. But it's also another one of those situations where, boom, if McGlinchey has his shoulders facing the line of scrimmage and not the sideline, he's probably in a better position to kick out and to be able to prevent um, Crosby from working vertically upfield like he does right here, getting pressure on Wilson. So once again, I hate how these tackles, and I've really only watched the Broncos this year, I haven't seen any other teams' tackles really um, in depth enough. But once again, it may be coached that way. I disagree. And I do not think, I never, I always teach to always keep your shoulders square to the line of scrimmage because in the junior football level, it gets a beat. In the high school level, it gets a beat. That was actually a big issue. Shout out, and shout out to my man, Russell, because he's actually putting a lot of good work this season. So I appreciate my left tackle. Um, but he had an issue. I'm, I'm, maybe I'll call him out on stream right now. Um, sometimes my, my, my boys watch. So shout out to you guys. Um, but Russell, he would like to turn his shoulders face the, the, um, and face the sideline with his shoulders. He would get beat inside a ton um, or outside. And he pretty much he just wasn't able to stay in front of the guy when he turned his shoulders. He got beat inside um, a lot, and they were just running circles around him. So he changed that after the first couple of weeks. It looked a lot better in week two. So if these high schoolers can make that um, transition, then so can these NFL players. I'm sure of it. So once again, they might be teaching this. I don't think that's a good idea if they are. But also, what do I know? I'm not getting paid millions and millions of dollars to do this stuff. In fact, they're probably not. I mean, maybe. If at least I'm not getting paid hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to coach this game. I wish I was. We'll get there yet. Okay, second last play. Um, this is on the final offensive drive of the game. You see Trapman in there getting some good work on Max Crosby. 
Uh, Max Crosby really has to go upfield. To, he works the outside on Trotman um, to get around him, not working back inside. He's keeping contained like he's supposed to. Um, so what would be nice here is that McGlinchey, he puts himself in decent situation. Obviously, he looks inside to help, which is good. Uh, just puts the hand out. He doesn't really change his eyes. But it's once again, he turns out to him, and he gives ground. He gives up ground into the pocket. You see, he turns here. He's right here. And he takes a couple steps towards the hashes, kind of narrows the pocket for Russell Wilson. You can't give ground like that. You cannot give ground inward like that. That's not good stuff from Mike McGlinchey right there. All right, last play of the game before we cap things off here. Okay, they're in 11, obvious passing situation. Crosby's out super wide. McGlinchey, he brings his feet together a little bit right there. But he ends the game on a good rep um, because it's all about placement, uh, head placement and hand placement. Heads inside. His hands are a little rough. Um, he, initially, you see them. He strikes on the outside of Crosby, gets his hands on the shoulders. Maybe a little bit holder, but um, holding doesn't exist if you're off of the lineman. It's not a real thing. That's a defense. That's a myth propagated by the defensive line. So decent hand placement there, but it's all about the leg placement and the body position is more important than hand placement. So he has that first and foremost. Hands are secondary, but he does a decent job. At least his right hand stays on the shoulder a little bit, but he work, he's able to, to replace his hands, which is good. So here he works back underneath, replaces his hands, especially his left one. See right there, it disappears, work back inside, and he just keeps the feet chopping. You keep the feet chopping, that helps with the defender not be able to get past you. Look, he keeps the feet moving, keeps good head placement. Max Crosby tries to work outside. He's able to kick, step, get in front of him. This is a this might be one of his best blocks of the entire game, and it comes on the last rep. Um, so this is a really good place to end film. So good job, Mike McGlinchey. Overall, um, I'm gonna grade him a I will give him in his dropbacks against Max Crosby, I will give him a B. Um, maybe close to B minus, but I'm right there with a solid B. He did. He was serviceable. He was good at times. Had a handful of mistakes, but um, it only cost the team really a couple times there, but those were costly. Um, so overall on the whole, you can check out the article that breaks down pretty much his um, entire game of the pass pro. Like I said, we're just looking at the dropbacks here. Um, Mike McGlinchey, overall, I give him about an A minus to a B plus and A minus um, on his overall performance in the pass game. Um, and then I would give him a probably, I think PFF gave him like a, like a D plus or something like that. I'll give him, I'll give him a B to B minus in the pass pro department. Um, so I think he did pretty well. And don't be worried if you're if you are concerned at all. Don't be. Mike McGlinch is going to get a lot better as the season goes on. Um, get a lot more reps underneath him. He's not going to be um, going against Max Crosby's every week either. And especially with Chase Young not playing this week for the Commanders, I think Mike McGlinch goes out and he has a takes a big step forward. Um, and he looks good. I, I I really do have a lot of confidence in Mike McGlinchy coming up. Um, this week and home against the commanders but that being said ladies and gentlemen my name has been ross i really appreciate all those that tune into the live stream and i tremendously appreciate anyone that has just uh, tuned into the video especially if you watch till the end right here um i hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week follow us on social medias if you haven't done so already um at mile high report facebook instagram and twitter Yours truly runs the Instagram, so I'm always there responding and seeing anything you guys have to say. Um, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube if you haven't done so already. We really appreciate your support. And for tons of awesome park, um, podcasts daily, go ahead and um, check out us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, pretty much everywhere. It's part of the Fans First Sports Network. It is Mile High Broncos podcast. We got a great crew here, and we appreciate you guys tuning in. So you guys have a fantastic rest of your week. Like I said, go out and be a positive impact on someone today, and we'll see you guys in the next podcast, next article, or even better, the next film breakdown. See ya.